Mind. Let me guess. Henry Ford. How flattering. No, I mean, we're out here. Stars are shining in the sky. Our lips intertwined like a plate of linguine. And if it weren't for Henry Ford, we'd be stuck at home fighting over cow space during reruns of Who's the Boss? Kids, break it up. Come on, let's move it out of here. Uh oh, I saw nothing. I swear to God, the moonlight was glaring on the windshield. I didn't even recognize the car. It's okay, Stan. Besides, you're the last guy I'd expect to see up. It's okay, Stan. Uh, I'm, I'm out of here. Uh, you two just keep doing whatever it is you were, you know. Not that I. Because the moonlight, you know, glaring. And... <sighs> kind of broke the mood. With a sledgehammer. Might as well check out those reruns. Marty said she's been dead a couple of hours. No footprints in the area except for hers and yours. Pretty straightforward suicide. Give the notification. There's no ID. 12 bucks in her pocket, a bag of grass, two keys tied together with string. 16, you figure? <laughs> if that. Let's find where the keys fit. Maybe it'll help us attach a name. Close my eyes, I can still see her face. That's why cops become insomniacs. Department of Education, Buffalo. They're gonna need an answer pretty soon. I know. You want the job, don't you? It's the opportunity of a lifetime. Look, Tony, I know we said we can make it work. But how? I don't know. But you said if I had the job in Buffalo, we'd all be packing. Maybe we could have some kind of trial period. Six months. How could I just go off to Buffalo and leave you with the baby and with David? I'm not being rhetorical. Maybe, maybe Sarah should go with you. David's got school. That'd be more disruptive. The baby should definitely be with you. Yeah. God. I feel like we're arranging for visitation rights. Well, if this thing's gonna happen, we gotta figure something out. I know. <laughs> I know. I know, Phil. And check with NCIC.
for a lame like suicide? Jane Doe. We're trying to match the keys we found to the lockers at the buses and train stations. Maybe she's from out of town. Could be a runaway. That's what I was thinking. I'm on my way to see Steve Ennis at the shelter. I've been wanting to meet him. They say he's a miracle worker with those kids. What? Nothing. You want to meet him, meet him. I haven't seen a miracle worker since Anne Bancroft. You think I'd give a damn what happened to you before you got here? You old lady wailed on you? I don't care. That's over. Daddy couldn't keep his hands off you? That's over. I don't care. Booze, pills, turning tricks. Man, I am sick and tired of the same old thing. Yeah, you had it tough. Nobody should have to go through what you did. But you split for crying out loud, so stop whining about how mom and dad did you wrong. Because you want to know something? They taught you the best lesson you're ever going to learn. It's up to you. Nobody took care of you then, and nobody's going to take care of you now. You want to make something out of your life? Maybe we can help. You don't? The streets out there wait. It's up to you. Come on. I want to hear it. It's up to me. 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 Steve? I'm Sid Madison. It's a real pleasure to meet you. Well, thank you. We found her last night hanging from a tree near Porter Road. Who is she? One of the ones that didn't make it. She was um, here a few weeks ago, just for a couple of days. What's her name? Ah. Only a few weeks and you're drawing a blank already? You remember every guy trots through your precinct? Every one. And you're a better man than I. I can't remember what I had for lunch. Now keep this. I'll show it to the kids, people on the staff. If I hear anything about her, I'll let you know. About. What? What? The new Ice Age. I don't like him. Oh, really? Don't tell me you were taken in. I don't know. I thought he was The guy's okay. a spellbinder. You saw their faces. He wants them to stand up for themselves. What's so terrible about that? I... That tough love stuff? You got to know when it'll work and when it'll push a kid over the edge. And he's no Freud. Well, you may not like his style. It's not his you... style, Sid. It's not his style. Wow. Hey, Commissioner. <laughs> hey, hey. It's hey. Joey. Uh, meet Detective Sid Madison. Joey Burke. Hey. So you're a detective, huh? Doing the equal opportunity thing, huh? Hey! Get yeah, not a minute too soon. There was no equal opportunity thing. I'm, I'm the best person for the job. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Sensitive. Really? Yeah, I haven't seen you at the uh, hamburger stand. Come by, because you know next week they're putting me in charge of french fries. It's a big move up, but, uh, you know, I'm the best person for the job. <laughs> <laughs> Joey lives at the shelter. Yeah, but I ain't mooching, you know. I pay rent. Ten bucks a week. It's Steve's way of teaching us incorrigibles a sense of responsibility, you know. Uh, Joey, do me a favor. <laughs> Man. She killed herself last night, you know her? Well, I've seen her around, is all. You know, they come and they go. You don't know her name? Where she's from? No. We want to know how to fire family. Keep your ears open, huh? Yeah. See you guys later. We picked him up two years ago over at Hastings. Slumped over in a doorway, stoned out of his mind. Looks clean now. Whatever Anna's doing must be working, right? Hey, boss. Stan. 
Tony. That suicide may not be a Jane Doe anymore. The daughter ran away six months ago from Binghamton. Two weeks ago, she called to say she was coming home and never did. She'd been staying at the Eastbridge shelter. Description matches. Mr. and Mrs. Fraser, this is Commissioner Scally. What's going on here? Why won't anyone tell us about Linda? you find your daughter. Hi, hon. They call from Buffalo their answer today. I always wanted to try to teach kids and run a department at the same time. And now I have that... Rach. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not dedicated enough. Honey. So big deal. I am not a 90s woman. You're the greatest woman I've ever known. You've supported me in my career for 15 years. You moved three times. And I know you'd still rather be back in Brooklyn. But you did it because you love me and you believe in me. Let me return the favor. David needs me. Sure he does. So do I. But we want you to do what you need to do. You always put us first. Put yourself first now. 40 minutes by plane. Sarah and you will come down one weekend. David and I will come up the next. You're making this sound very simple. It won't be for any of us. But if you don't do it, you always told me, don't live with the regret of never having tried. <sighs> There's one thing I really hate. It's having my own brilliance thrown back at me. It's a drag, ain't it? Yeah. I'll try it for six months. And if it doesn't work out... At least you'll have given it a shot. Since when? What is it, Sid? Oh, uh, Jane Doe's locker. We finally found it. Over at Amtrak. It was a suicide note. To whom it... I'm so sorry. I can't live anymore knowing that Linda Frazier died. The missing girl from Binghamton? That Linda Frazier died because of me. Forgive me, Chris Malloy. We know Chris Malloy's dead. We assume Linda Frazier is. They both spent time at the shelter. And Steve Ennis knows more than he's saying. Well, how do you get that? Tony! Put Chris Malloy's name on NCIC. Maybe someone will claim her. OK, I'll call Linda Frazier's parents. Until we find a body, I want to leave with some kind of hope. Uh, get a search team together and meet me at the shelter in an hour. Without a warrant? If Ennis has nothing to hide, we should not need one. But Tony! Linda Frazier. Nah, don't ring a bell. The girl that hung herself, Chris Malloy, she said Linda died because of her. Come on, Joey, talk to me. Pete, hey, Tony, it's like I said, you know, they come and they go. It's, it's like ships that pass in the night. You've been living here two years. Like that. And you gotta chill. Jeez, too much stress hardens your capillaries. I must have asked at least 20 kids about Chris and Linda. People saw him, but nobody knew him. It's like there were shadows on the wall. They weren't shadows. I think there are people here who did know him. I just think they're not saying. 
Oh, hey, Steve, how are you? Hey, hey, Joey. Charge a French fries, huh? <laughs> What'd I tell you? He said that I could do it. <laughs> It's great, man. Hey, you know, I'm late for something. Hey, Joey, I'll see you later. Yeah. Linda Frazier was here. If you'd have come to me, I could have told you that, but you didn't come to me. Why didn't you come to me? Because I wanted the truth. You got it. You don't want to accept it. Chris Malloy hung herself because she felt responsible for Linda Frazier's death. These kids came here for your help. They had no place else to go. I think they deserve... Don't tell me what they deserve. I'm with them every day. I feed them breakfast in the morning, and I hold them when they scream with nightmares you can't begin to imagine. So drop the moral outrage. The only reason you're here is because you got a corpse you don't know what to do with. I think you knew Chris and Linda a lot better than you said. I think they did, too. Uh-huh. Then why won't they tell you? I've seen you in action. Without breaking a sweat, you could intimidate these kids into keeping quiet. You're a very powerful man. <laughs> I have no badge. I have no budget. If that's power... You control the way they think. No power is greater than that. Tony! Uh, we'd like to take a look around. What do you say, Steve? Where's your warrant? Uh, look all you want. There's, uh, milk and cookies in the kitchen. Turn it upside down. so small, like she was already far away. Look, it haunts me, too. But Kathy Bauman committed suicide. Your own Emmy said so. And Child Protective Services. You pushed her to it. No, I didn't. And I'll never convince you of it, will I? So four years later, you're coming after me again. That's what this is about. I'm high profile now. Talk shows, press conferences with the governor, the kid from the streets that turned his life around. I'm the local hero whose star shines even brighter than yours, and you can't stand it. You know, instead of persecuting me, you could be helping these kids. You and me, we joined forces. We could turn some more lives around. That's what's important, isn't it? not. You just want to prove you were right about me all along. Boss, you better get down to the basement. What do we got? Skin. You're conducting a witch hunt, Tony. I'm conducting an investigation, Louise. That's not how it's perceived by the public. Public perceptions are your department. I'm looking to make a case. You're looking to turn personal antipathy toward innocence into a power play of your own. I don't work that way. Oh, we all work that way. That's why we got into this business. I'll deny on a stack of Bibles ever having said that. 31% of the kids who've come to the shelter have left to finish high school. 18% have gone to college. Steve Innes is having a major impact on their lives. Two kids are dead. The impact isn't completely positive. That's outrageous. He is one of the most dedicated... I found skin in the basement, Louise. Human skin. How outrageous is that? 
I'm gonna finish this investigation. Then you and I can discuss his qualifications for sainthood. Nobody's claimed Kristen Lloyd's body? No. And the coroner needs the space. So they'll bury her in Potter's Field, alone. She was someone's little girl, and she'll be buried alone. It's not supposed to be like that. Um, just for the record, um, I think it was pretty great of you to tell Rachel to take that job. <sighs> just for the record, I wish I meant it. I know her career is as important as mine. What I don't know is what I'm going to do without her. From the lab, Sid? Thanks, Courtney. The bar nucleus test on the skin we found at the shelter. Female. Now, it could be any female. We can't say it was Linda Fraser, and we can't say how it got there. Tony, I don't know what's going on between you and Ennis, but you could be looking for links that just aren't there. Someone's got to protect those kids. They're afraid to talk, Sid. I can feel it. Joey's afraid, and I know him. The links are there. We just got to tighten them. what you said. So I lied. It's the first one you ever heard. It's all right, Joey. I know what's going on. You don't have to cover for Ennis anymore. I know Ennis was involved with Chris and Linda. No, he wasn't. Joey. Man, my life was a wreck. And he made something out of that. It was the first time anyone ever really cared about me. You made something of your life, Joey. Don't let him or anyone take credit for what you've done. Chris left a suicide note. She said that Linda died because of her. What did she mean? Maybe she was jealous. You know how chicks are. Was there a guy? Was it Steve? Steve isn't like that. Was it you? Oh, man, no, no, no. We were friends, that's all, all right? They thought I was funny. We'd hang together sometimes, sometimes. Where? Friend Joey. So was Linda. Help me find out what happened to him. Don't you think you owe him that? Where'd you hang out? She had wild tendencies. A lot of them are like that. You know, I can spot them, the wild ones. Wild. What? Chris Malloy. Hey, hey. The blonde is Chris Malloy. Is the brunette Linda Frazier? Yeah, that's her. So Ennis knew them both. Those links we were looking for? I think they just got tighter. I bet serious money Joey knows where this picture was taken. Give me odds. Excuse me, uh, we'd like to speak to Joey Burke, please. Huh. So would I. The kid hasn't shown up. Thanks. Come again. Did he call? You know, you'd think you'd find one with a head on his shoulders. Well, did you check with the shelter? 
I got a business to run. Oh, and hey, you tell him he can forget being in charge of French fries. Yes, I'd like to speak to Joey Burke, please. When was that? You sure? Thanks. Joey's stuff has gone from the shelter. Anna saw Joey talking to me there. He doesn't want him to talk to me again. Anna has him. Oh, whoa, you're making a leap that it doesn't make Joey's any... lived at the shelter for two years. All of a sudden, his stuff is gone? Well, no one says he has to live there forever, right? But we'll put out an APB. Unless it's already too late. Linda's body could be buried here. Joey's too, for all we know. For all we know, they both could still be alive. Um, you said it until She's we dead, have a She's dead, Sid. And Ennis lied about knowing her. That doesn't mean he killed her. I mean, if anything, Chris Malloy pointed the finger at herself. He was part of it. I know he was. Tony, listen to yourself. Maybe Ennis was on target. You are so caught up in proving you were right about this him. This is about Joey missing. And about skin on the floor, and about Ennis's lie. I am caught up in a murder investigation, Detective. And if you are unable or unwilling to participate, tell me now! <sighs> Don't you think I've thought about it? A am I letting my personal feelings override judgment? Is it Rachel leaving that's got me all... Or is it what happened with Kathy Bauman four years ago? I read the file, what there was of it. We caught a shoplifting. Run away. I thought, Juvie's the dead end, let's try Ennis. I kept in touch. About a year, she straightened up. She said she was going home. I bought her a little bag, put her stuff in. Then I got a call. She cut her wrist. She bled to death in my arms on the shower floor. She was happy and going home. Why would she want to kill herself? Such a waste. Venice didn't want her to leave. Sex? He denied it. But by the way the other kids talked, I knew there was something. I brought her there so he could help her. And she died, Sid. You did exactly what you should have done. What any of us would have. I just keep seeing those girls' faces. Now Joey's. Now Joey's. OK. You call this number. Talk to the guy, you can start tomorrow, 3.20 an hour. Cool, man. Travis. You can do it, man. Where's Joey? I don't know, probably the hamburger. No, he's not. Then I don't know. I don't have a leash on him. His stuff is gone. Well, he does that. He takes off. Sometimes we don't see him for weeks. He had a job. It meant a lot to him. He's 16. There are no locks on these doors. They can do what they want. Come on, man. That's the point. We better find him. Alive and unharmed. I hope you do. What's this? We're taking your basement floor. A judge agreed that we have reason to believe that a murder was committed in the basement. And that the floor on which we found human female skin served as significant instrumentality in the commission of that murder. You take the floor, we have to close the shelter. Gee, I guess you will. And what happens to the kids? They'll have to go to the shelters in Groverton and Dillmont. They shouldn't be uprooted like that. You've got no right to do this. I have this. the right to protect them. I was too late for Linda, but I'm How not... How times do I have to say it? I didn't know her. Then who's sitting next to her? Um, we went on a field trip. Oh, and you're just now remembering. We go on lots of field trips. Look on the wall in the rec room. There must be a thousand pictures like that. Where is this? Oh, that's right. You can't remember what you had for lunch. 
Keep the warrant. Take the floor. You make five copies of the 1811, keep four and throw away one? Yeah. Why? Well, it's the way we've always done it. One's for our own files, one's for the DA, there's one for general distribution, and one for the complainant. That's only four. What do we do with the fifth? Throw it away. And why do we make it? Oh, uh, well, um, you know, it's the way we've always done it. Stan, when I first got married, I noticed my wife cuts off the ends of a roast beef. She told me, if meat gets brown, the gravy comes out better, and my mother's been doing it that way for 30 years. We have dinner over her mother's house. I ask her why she cuts off the ends. She says, the meat gets brown, the gravy turns out better, and my mother's been doing it that way for 30 years. I call her mother. I ask her why she cuts off the ends of her roast beef. And she says, so it'll fit in the pan. Get my point? So it'll fit in the pan. Right. And don't forget, you can always call me. I know. I mean, any time, day, night, I don't care. I know. Don't worry. I'll take care of Dad. Make sure he lays off the ice cream. We're really proud of you. Am I doing the right thing? It's like, suppose I had the chance to bungee jump off the George Washington Bridge. I would never let you. I know. And I'd mope about it for weeks, maybe months. Who knows? The disappointment may haunt me for the rest of my life. I don't want that on my head. Anything on Joey? Uh, state trooper's negative. No buses, trains. And Annis hasn't left the shelter since we took the floor. If he's keeping him somewhere, why hasn't he made a move? Might have killed him already. Tony. If something's happened to Joey because of me. Well, <clears throat> I might be able to find out where that picture was taken. There's this guy at the assessor's office. And he's interested. In what? Me. Oh. Not surprising. Well, the guy's the 32nd degree dweeb, but, but he's got access to every file in the tri-state area. So, in the interest of showing you that you have my full cooperation and total support, I traded one dinner at a very dimly lit restaurant for a search of Ennis's property files. Let me know where he's taking you. The wine will be on me. No, it'll be on him. He's got this drooling problem. owns this place? Through a couple dummy corporations. It's on the books as a retreat. Let's get started.
looks like blood and, I don't know, some kind of powder or ashes. Call the lab. Have them send a van up here. brought him here. Linda and Joey, they were probably dead already. And then he cut him up, and he burned him in that tub. Lust that turned into rage. And then he buried him out here somewhere. Tony, you don't know that. Not here, but here. Well, if they are buried out there, how are you going to dig up 40 acres? One scoop at a time. And we've got a call into Fort Dix for a grave identification dog to help us with the search. Just probe the surface. We're looking for recently disturbed earth. OK, go. Let's go. The lab said it was a mix of human blood types found in the tub and on the ax. And there was residue of kerosene in the tub. We're closing in, Sid. I can feel it. This is just another example of police department harassment. It's the kids that'll suffer. That's the real tragedy. This is private property. And this is a properly executed search warrant, valid till 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. What are you searching for? He's already destroyed the East Bridge shelter. Kids have been thrown back out on the street. Now he's on some kind of crusade to destroy this property as well. Commissioner, does that have to do with no election comment. Yet? I have no comment at this time. Stay behind the line. This is a crime scene. Excuse crime me. Scene. What are you talking about? What kind of crime scene? Keep the press off my back. I said what kind of crime scene? Dismemberment and cremation of Linda Fraser and Joey Burke. You brought him here. Linda, because you slept with her, and Joey, because he knew about it. Then you hacked them to pieces, and you burned them in that tub. Man, where do you get this stuff? I never slept with Linda or any of my kids. They're, they're my kids. Hacking them to pieces, burning them. The only thing that's burning is you. The idea of get me is burning a hole inside you. It's a sickness. You're a sick man, Tony. Get some help before everything you built in your life comes tumbling down. I'm going to find those bodies. Get some help, Tony. Before it's too late. Sorry, Commissioner. Sergeant, the remains of two children are out there. Not according to Miko, and he's the best we got. I wish I could have helped you. You feed him regular dog food or something special? Rachel's just going to be leaving in an hour. Get everyone digging again. He's not going to get away with it twice. We have until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Get him digging. OK, people, you heard him. Let's go. Are you planning to sue? Sure, a lawsuit's possible. It's going to take money to fix the shelter, bring those kids a sense of continuity that's been destroyed needlessly. And it's money the taxpayer shouldn't have to spend. Honey, maybe I shouldn't go. Not with everything that's going on. I've looked like a fool before. <sighs> we still have until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. I could look like an even bigger fool. Take care of your mommy. At least you won't have to hear me snore. You won't have to deal with my nylons in the sink. See? Everything's gonna work out great. Yeah. Best thing that could have happened.
go with Rachel. Tony? Right, I'm on my way. No, Tony, just go home. I'll call you if it... I'm on my way. All units zone four. Stolen yellow cab heading west on LaSalle. New York two, quick seven. <laughs> This is C1. Suspect vehicle now heading north on Belmont. Requesting backup. In pursuit. by the hamburger stand and you weren't there. So? You seem pretty jazzed about being in charge of the french fries. <laughs> Great career move, huh? Why'd you steal the car? I had some errands to run. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm doing. <sighs> You're confused. I can understand that. Uh, the things that have happened with Steve. It's not on account of Steve. Steve has nothing to do with it. Sit tight, okay? Where am I going? We got something? Uh, an idea. Maybe it's crazy, maybe not. Here, Stan. Hey, boss. What is it? Well, we're hanging here, and I'm looking around, and I see one of these farmer magazines, you know, uh, about increasing your soybean yield. What's the idea, Stan? Well, one of the articles is about pulling up core samples of Earth to test for enzyme levels, pollutants, you know, that kind of thing. And I started thinking, what if we pulled up core samples to check for enzymes, but, you know, like the kind that bodies give off? So, dumb idea or what? Boss, you that? Be worth it. When you come up empty one more time and I file a monster lawsuit, and your career is a thing of the past, what would it have been worth it? You're the kind of guy I'd say yes. I gotta admire that. Tony! Thirty-two A. It's giving off a very high enzyme level. I think you should dig. Thirty-two A. Let's go. Be careful, boss. 
the phone stand. Get it. Ennis, you're under arrest. You're under arrest. Boss, it's a horse. <laughs>